Will, Will Rogers, he's put up some pretty good numbers this year uh, in the air raid system. Is he unfairly labeled a system quarterback? Yeah, I think he probably is. I mean, obviously you, you judge a quarterback by uh, how they perform and, and typically the record of your team. And so uh, since he's been the starter, we won a lot of games and, and he's played really, really well when he gets us into the right plays. Uh, you know, I, I think I can't speak to every offensive system, but I know in the last three years learning under Coach Leach, he gives a quarterback a tremendous amount of, of freedom at the line of scrimmage to, to really check into whatever he wants. And uh, Will's, Will's got to be up there. He's one of the best to ever do it in, in, his, in his system. So, uh, yeah, I think it'd probably be an unfair label. For both coaches, again, Coach Zach, we'll start with you. The portal, great coming in. Now you got to worry about going out. How much of a double-edged sword has that become? Yeah, it's the same for everyone, right? Obviously, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new day and age of college football. Players have opportunities. If, if uh, you know, there's a better fit for them and a better opportunity for them, then they certainly have the, the right to go and do that. And obviously, you have the right to, to recruit and try to improve your team. And so, uh, yeah, it's a reality we're all dealing with. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, when I took the job uh, two years ago, I told Josh that it was coming out of COVID and it was entering the portal world, right? And, and it's really allowed you to, uh, for a coach taking over a program, right, allows you to flip your roster pretty quickly um, into your skill sets, right? Like not, not good, bad, or indifferent. We were, we were going to definitely do things differently offensively and defensively than they had prior recruited. So we kind of adjusted the staff and the roster uh, as it goes forward. I didn't even realize I had a personnel meeting yesterday and, and uh, um, uh, it was brought to my attention, I guess, we're one of the uh, top five or, or tied for second or whatever it was in fewest guys in the portal. Um, and, and I didn't really know that. I don't really count it. I didn't track it, although I've been listening to some of these bowl games and I heard as high as many as 20 players in the portal. Like, I mean, to me, that's like crazy. Um, but everybody runs their program a little bit different. Like, we, we, we we're a development type program, but there's been guys that have come in and helped. Obviously, Tommy DeVito, we're a different football team because of the quarterback, right? Like. Um, that was an immediate one. Uh, right now, we have some portal guys that we haven't been able to talk about yet because it's, and I'm sure Zach is, you know, it's the portal thing is very frustrating because you can't sign them to anything. I mean, you can sign them to an NIL if you want to burn it, um, uh, an, N an LI, right? Not an NIL, yeah. uh, uh, an NLI. <laughs> That's a letter of intent, but it's non binding. So, like, they can literally take a scholarship and then go, and it does, there's no repercussions on them. It's just on the school. So, we don't sign our guys. Um, so they're not literally going to be committed 100% to our program until the first day of class. Uh, for us, is you know the second uh, uh, January, whatever it is, the 17th after Martin Luther King Day. So it's a really the NCAA is trying to catch up to it. The 85 rule scholarship really has helped, but um, I think it's a necessary evil just in the world that we're in right now. Yeah. Uh, Brett, where are you guys at health-wise? Is there anyone you don't think you'll have available on Monday? Yeah, I, um, not pulling one on, on Zach here. We, we're actually 100%. Um, <laughs> The only guy, uh, 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 Josh Geske, who's a, a backup lineman, um, he got injured in uh, um, bull practice before we left, and he, he, he went through Indy today. I, I don't know if he'll play, but he's uh, a backup lineman and, and, and on field goal. But other, otherwise, everybody, other than the guys you know about, right, the guys that have missed season all, all year, everybody should be good to go. For Coach Arnett, um, following up the same question to him, you know, there are players' availability for this game as well as health. And on top of that, how have you yourself handled the transition to head coach and still being defensive coordinator and getting ready for this game and being involved in the offense? Yeah, well, obviously, we expect everyone who's on the trip to be available to play. And so we're, we're, we're at full strength as well. And obviously, it's, a, it's been a learning experience, to say the least. Um, right? Obviously, got a lot trying to, trying to prepare for a great offense. Uh, still, you know, still being the defensive coordinator, call the defense, but then obviously also responsible for seeing the whole program. Uh, fortunately for myself, uh, got to learn under obviously one of the best to ever do under Coach Leach, and just doing my best to try to replicate what he would do. Okay, down here in front for Brett. You yep. mentioned it before, but with Aaron Henry, it's not a new responsibility, but maybe a new title. We talked to guys like Johnny Newton and Tyreek Barnes who weren't in his position group, so we know what Aaron's about. So when you were able to make that announcement. What, how did you feel the team reacted to kind of knowing what Aaron's about and what they're going to get? Yeah, um, unfortunately, because of the timing of the whole thing, you know, um, I, I believe Tuesday morning I knew that Ryan was going to get the job. I was with Aaron. That's when I told him. And then we were in homes that week. And, of course, 
that was the last week of live recruiting, so I was telling people in the homes, like, hey, this is, everybody want to know who's going to be the D coordinator. I'm like, well, you're sitting right next to them. And they thought I was talking about me. I'm like, no, the other side, right? And, <laughs> and uh, I, I really wanted to keep it under wraps just for one reason. I, I think there's a great power in telling your players first, right? But it was just kind of the way that it played out. I, I, I knew that wasn't going to be possible. And then literally Taz um, literally called Aaron and I were in the car. I, I just told Aaron that I was going to name coordinator about uh, an hour earlier. We were driving to a, a recruit's home. And Taz called, and he thought he would, he was worried he was going to be leaving, right? So uh, Aaron had begun to tell a few guys that what was happening as well. So, uh, but the reaction has been awesome. And just at practice, like, you know, obviously there's a game plan involved with Mississippi State. So we'll, we'll do a lot of things that we've done, but we'll also change up some things. And I'm excited for the off season. I'll, I'll, uh, uh, whoever I bring in there in the outside linebacker room, I know exactly what I'm looking for there. I got a pool of about five, six guys, and um, I'll, I'll kind of sort through that with Aaron and the rest of the staff. Um, I'm, I'm kind of elevating JMO as well uh, to some uh, a title that that I think those two guys you can you can do that when you have guys that know each other. Heck, those guys play together, right? Um, so I think it's exciting about what our defense has been and maybe possibly where it can go. Right down here in front. 